I want you to take really care of my desserts. Wow. <laughs> that was just a TikTok partially loading. Hello. You may notice from a slight upgrade in camera quality that I am. Uh, Oh, in fact, we might even be able to get even higher quality. Let's have a look. I'm shooting on my new Canon G7X PowerShot Mark II. I'll tell you what, this camera is not as comfortable to hold as the Mark I was. But um, it is theoretically better. I've actually got another one of these coming, so I will have two of them. But one of them is going back on sale on eBay. Let's see if I can make a little bit of a profit. So, um, yeah, let me see. Let me fiddle. All right, so I believe that it, it is on the highest setting, but I've just upgraded the frame rate, so that's very exciting. Um, yeah, it is Monday, the 20th of July. Um, I'm currently reading They Came to Baghdad by Agatha Christie. Um, I've read three of these little ladybird books, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to film my wrap up and then I'm just going to splice that footage in here. Yo, hey, the cool thing about this camera is that it just perches on top of the tripod. I don't need to screw it in. Oh, hello, it's pinging, it's pingy pooing. Right, I have three books to wrap up for you. These are all Ladybird books for adults by J.A. Hazley and J.P. Morris. We have the Ladybird book of dating, we have the Ladybird book of the meeting, and the Ladybird book of the dog. So I don't have dogs, but I know of dogs, and so I enjoyed this. Uh, I have been in meetings, so I enjoyed this. And I have dated, so I enjoyed this. I gave all of these four out of five. I think the best way for me to convey what they're all about is literally just to read you bits from them. So that's what I'm going to do. So we're skipping at random, a page at random for each one. Actually, I did quite like that one. Let's go back to that one. Men's brains and women's brains are different, even as children. Boys like to knock a hula hoop off an after eight with a cocktail stick. Girls prefer balancing a first class stamp on top of a Mr. Man's bowler hat. To get along, men and women pretend not to mind those little differences, or they become homosexuals. Yep, pretty much accurate, I would say. The Ladybird Book of the Meeting, we've got this. Roland and Dan are having an informal chat before going into their pre-meeting about the meeting to discuss the pre-conference plans for this year's conference. Roland has had a toothache for six months, but has not had the time to meet the dentist. And here we have how it works, the dog. Dog and man have been friends for many thousands of years. Dognold is going to bury his owner's dinner in the garden, in case any hyenas or jackals or saber-toothed tigers come and try to steal it. Thank you, Dognol. That is very useful of you. But yeah, I've read these three, so... Uh... Sorry, getting quite annoyed by bloody... Somebody sent me a TikTok, and that is the TikTok loading in the background. That's how slow it is. Um, yeah, so I will cut to the footage of these. And yeah, I am now currently reading They Came to Baghdad by Agatha Christie, which is very good so far. I'm reading this little uh, Fontana edition. It's only about 180 pages and I'm on page like 40 or so. So that's very good. Enjoying it so far. And um, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to read next. Maybe some more Shakespeare. Maybe some more Christie. I don't know. I've almost finished reading my bedtime book as well. Have I got something on my face? Is that just shadow? I don't know. Um, which is... Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson. It's not very good to be honest, but uh, last night I was also cracking on with Romeo et Juliette by William Shakespeare Which is Romeo and Juliet en français et c'est d'accord bien En ce moment I almost said c'est d'accord, but that doesn't make sense because you can only use that d'accord means okay But it means okay in the sense of will you do the washing up d'accord as opposed to what did you think of it? C'est d'accord. You couldn't say that you'd have to say c'est bien or you know C'est pas mal. It's not bad. Mm. Oh yeah, and I'm um, locking up at the art centre in a few hours for a band called Halvar, who are having their band practice there. Cool. Yo, oh I forgot to mention I'm still watching, Ma G what is it? MasterChef The Professionals. In fact, am I on the, f I think I am on the final. It's a uh, young dude who's 21 from Maidenhead, which is just around the corner from me, versus Lady Lady, who's quite good. I've, I've liked her since the start. And uh, Beardy Man, who, uh, oh, who is it that he reminds me of? He reminds me of someone. Is he the one who reminds me of someone? I was born in Sale, and then I moved to Berry. No, I don't think it is this one. There was another Beardy Man who properly reminded me of Samuel Tarly. But I think he got, he's gone.
I am learning about cocaine. Uh, oh, hello, that's better. I cut my hair and my beard. You can kind of tell. I don't know, my hair's still a bit of a mess. It's like, yeah, look. I don't know. It is what it is. It's uh, not as long at the back now, so I can... I just don't feel, I don't know, too ridiculous. I don't like looking at myself from above, though. Because I was looking at my head the other day, and I was like, if you brush that back and you brush over, look how big my forehead is. It's not a forehead, it's a five head. It's Tuesday. Yeah, it is. It's Tuesday. So, my latest episode of The Art Show went out on Wickham Sound. It was with Mark Allard Will. Um... I post them on YouTube, nobody, well, people, some people watch them, uh, I can see that from like the analytics and stuff, but people very rarely like, like them and stuff, but hey ho, like it's another distribution method, I'm afraid, so like, I don't know, and also it's content, so yeah, uh, that's still, it'll still be getting put out on YouTube, but the next one is with Mark Allard Will, who is, uh, he's a graphic novelist, and he's also, um, he runs Cuckoo's Nest Press, uh, who are a Canadian, indie publisher you should listen to the episode really and let him talk about it because it's really like i really like what they're doing um his his wife uh she he sorry i just remembered something i remembered on the radio show i got his name wrong i called him mark allard will but his name's mark armstrong allard and then he's married to elaine allard will um either way people will find him but <laughs> but um yeah, his wife, Elaine, um, she did a graphic novel called Look Straight Ahead, and she did another one called, uh, which is a, sorry, I should explain, which is like a mental health graphic novel. Uh, kind of semi-fictional in the vein of like On the Road. And then um, she also did, it's called Dust Ship Glory, and it's about Tom Sukanon, who's um, it's like Finnish, Canadian, kind of legend. He's kind of like the John Henry of Canada, and he was this Finnish immigrant built a massive boat and everyone was like it's not gonna rain it's basically noah's ark like that but with a finnish immigrant and it did actually kind of happen so yeah i recommend checking those out uh, and mark he's created saskatchewan man who is like the you know what i mean he's, he's the saskatchewan hero i suppose i don't know i was just trying to think of what what would oh the ours would be um the wickham man because that's what um dave used to call himself the wick as in like a play on uh, the wicker man so it'd be the Wickham man. And High Wickham is known for chairs. So I guess he'd be good at making chairs. I don't I don't know. Anyway, I, ha I haven't really got much uh, reading done, unfortunately. I'm still reading They Came to Baghdad. I should finish this tonight. And as you can see, I've tabbed it out. I recently read uh, The Murder at the Vicarage, which is the first Miss Marple book. And I really enjoyed it. And I tabbed it out and filmed it. And I don't know what happened, but the footage disappeared. Uh, my computer's got gremlins at the moment. But uh, at least we're shooting in high definition quality video and stuff again. Oh, and this evening I recorded a song called Lean Down On Me. Uh, is it in my Dropbox yet? No, it's not. Uh, so it's got, to, it's got to upload from my uh, laptop and re-download. But um, yeah, Dave's got it because this is for my band The Ilk. So I've got to send it to Dave and then Dave will fix a lot of it because like, the drums are totally off time and stuff. But I've... But I spent two hours doing it, so it's over to Dave. Uh, and he'll probably put some vocals and some lead guitar and stuff on it. And, um, yeah, then he'll mix it, and then it'll go to Steve, who is our um, mastering guy. My hair isn't very even, I don't think. I don't know. I was trying to think. Here, it looks like I've got no hair. You know what I mean? Oh, well. I just attacked it because it was doing my head in, but my friend says it looks very... I think she said like 1990s or something, I don't know, yeah, so I can keep my fringe as well. I just basically trimmed off the ends where it was curly, and then thinned it out with a pair of thinning scissors, and that's about it, and then cut a bit off the back because it was too long at the back. So yeah, that's where we're at, um, I don't think I have any plans, I was thinking about going to the pub tonight, um, but that's not happening, which is hence why I had a few beers and did some recording, only like one and a half, two beers. Uh, sorry to disappoint everyone. <laughs> so yeah, as I say, I'm going to finish off reading that and I've got this big box of books to haul, so I'm going to go do that now. Oh, and I interviewed Emma Rosen from Emma Rosen Books. So, uh, I interviewed her early when we recorded that, so that she's going to be the next guest on, um, the art show. So I guess now I've got that, I can edit that too. It's very exciting. Uh, so I actually need to start thinking about who my next guest is going to be. 
probably should be somewhere from High Wycombe. <laughs> I'm watching Vipka and it won't let me pause. Hey Google, pause. TV. YouTube. Please. I don't mess up. Oh, well, I'm just, it won't pause on my computer either, so I'm just going to stop it. It is. Fuck, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday the 22nd, I think. Yeah. Uh, everyone's arguing on this, uh, everyone's arguing on this book group for all. Mm. Yes. Something went wrong. Oh, fucking hell, Try again in a few well. seconds. Everyone's arguing on this book group for um, authors because there's this one author who basically he wanted to stock up on copies of his book to sell to like overseas fans and stuff. And so he bought 400 copies like through a retailer or whatever um, to see what happened to his like sales rankings. And he ended up becoming a best selling author and everybody's really upset about it. And I personally, I don't care because I think, you know, bestseller lists and awards lists, I don't really place any precedent. Like, I don't care what they say. But, um, yeah, he's been stripped of his ranking. Everyone's going, like, justice. And I'm like, well, the guy needed 400 copies of his books, and he got 400 copies of his books, so I don't think he's that bothered. Plus, I think it'll be interesting, with all of this furor around it, will he sell 400 copies of his book and end up back on the bestseller list, you know? Um, so, I don't know. I think I see it as more as an interesting case study, whereas there are all these people getting really upset about it. Um... I don't know, I think it's one of those things, it's like uh, the Goodreads Choice Awards, where it's like voted on by people. Like, I don't care if the top memoir is some celebrity memoir, because the person who wrote it happens to have 20 million Twitter followers, and he gets them all to vote for it, you know? Um, if anything, I think that just exposes a flaw in literary awards, like an inherent flaw, that's why I don't really set any store by them. But um, I can see why it would be really upsetting if you either used the Goodreads Choice Awards to choose your reads, um, and you were trying to do it in like good faith or whatever, which I don't know why you would because of the inherent flaws behind it Or if you were one of the authors who were up against it and you didn't have that marketing platform But then I suppose then you've just got to understand that it depends on the way it's calculated So like with the Goodreads Choice Awards, it is a populist vote. So You got to be a populist author if you want to win it, you know, <laughs> that's it's just the it's just how it works It's like with publishing if you want to get your book published you kind of need an existing audience Granted, it's hard to build that audience without releasing a book, but that's just the way that the industry works, you know? I think people need to accept that a bit more. Uh, I've finished reading my Agatha Christie books. I'm currently reading The Death of Expertise by somebody Nichols. I can't see because the cat is on it, aren't you, Biggie? You're looking after it for me. There it is. Look, these are its pages. Um, but it's very good so far. I'll be doing a full review of it. I've been tabbing it out. And it's basically about how everyone thinks they're an expert these days um, and how that's causing a lot of problems. And uh, so there was a great example, the one example that's already stood out to me is uh, there was a poll held in America to determine whether the US should uh, like use a military invention in the Ukraine. And um, they basically found that the more people didn't know about the, the Ukraine, the more likely they were to think the US should get involved. Look how shiny my head is. I'm not actually this shiny, I don't know why. Like I'm covered in sweat or something, uh, or plastic. And um, yeah, it turns out, basically, if people thought the Ukraine was in South America or Australia, they were more likely to say that the US should, you know, stage a military invention, uh, intervention, which is just mad. It's just mad. The less informed people are, the more extreme their views are, you know? We have got a case of a little Mr. Purry Purrington here, haven't we, Biggie? Haven't we? Very purry today. Did a kiss. Thank you. You's a good boy. You're a good boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Very purry boy. You having to lie down? Oh man, what a day, what a day. Uh, I slept in to like half three. So my sleep screwed. I actually went to bed at half seven this morning. Um, been working so far today. 
I have just unblocked my bathroom sink. Um, it's a job I've been putting off for a while. Well, I was trying to unblock it with the plunger and shit, and it just wasn't working. So I had to take the actual uh, pipes, like, away from the wall. Um, which was kind of gross, because obviously all this horrible shit was like, falling out. Then I had to, like, clean out the inside of the pipes. Um, I thought maybe there was, like, blocked hair or something and it was going to be really gross. But it turned out to be, like, literally a, a chunk of lime scale about, like, like this wide. You know, um, you know when you see illust illustrations of, like, people who've had heart attacks and it shows you their veins where, like, the fat or whatever has cut off the vein because the fat's grown in, th you know, through the arteries or whatever and has, like, cut off the blood flow. That's what happened to the pipe, but with lime scale. That's mad. So, um, yeah, I have at least fixed it now. So now water drains down the drain. Because for a while I've just been washing my hands in the kitchen sink. There's actually a line in one of my songs. I wash my hands in the kitchen sink because the one inside the bathroom's congealed. My cat doesn't quite understand me. He thinks that he's the reason I feel. I'm not quite sure what you mean to me, but I think I understand the appeal. So, uh, anyway, I still need to clean that. But at least um, the blockage is gone, so the cleaning will be a lot easier now. I've also done my floors. I've, sw I've swept them. Um, I do have a hoover. I need to fix the hoover as well. There's so much shit to do, man. Um, let me show you out here. To the garden. Those are the things that haven't grown. Those big old ones there, right at the end, those are potatoes. So yeah, I've currently got, um, well out of the ones that are sprouting, my onions have sprouted, my potatoes have, my chilli plants are kind of just stuck about this big. Um, I don't know, we've had some sunny days so I was hoping that putting them outside would help but they haven't really, they've just sort of stagnated at like an inch tall or whatever. Uh, and I've planted some flower. Just the one of sunflower, mainly for decoration, but I do like sunflower seeds as well, so I can eat the seeds too. Um, and some tomatoes, so I don't know what's next. I might start herbs next. Uh, I don't know if you saw in that clip, there's also like a bit of wood that's on top of my um, gate, which has fallen off. <laughs> um, maybe I'll try and fix the gate. I don't know, it's quite handy having that wood there though, because like I prop it on the gate and it forms a shelf that I can put little pots on. Um, and the gate, in fact no, because if I put the gate back on, I think it opens inward as well, so it's like, it takes out half my garden space, you know. So that's where we're at, I'm still reading The Death of Expertise, it is very good so far. Uh, oh, I finished reading uh, Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson, which is my bedtime book. Um, so there is that. Uh, it's, yeah, it's Thursday, I might have some beers later, I haven't decided yet. Um, yeah, but just been keeping busy, as I say, really. So that's, I think, all, all I got for you right now. Oh, I said I was going to moan. I've had a thing through um, saying a parcel's been delivered, but I have to pay £12.79 customs charge. But I don't know what it is. I don't think I've ordered anything from abroad. So I'm probably just not going to pay it and let it be returned. Unless within the next seven days or whatever, I realise, oh, it's so-and-so. It might be the because i bought uh i upgraded the pickup in my guitar so it might be that because one of those got lost and they sent a replacement but um in which case it's better for me to just reject it anyway because then it gets returned to sender otherwise i'd have to pay to have it delivered and then i'd have to pay to then ship it back to them so i don't know um also yeah i ordered an, a set of classical guitar strings and 12 string guitar strings and uh they got delivered 
Well, basically, they didn't show up, so I contacted the guy, and he said, I'll send some more out to you, and he sent just the 12 strings, so I'm still missing the classical strings, which is annoying, because I've got the pickups ready to fit to them, to make them electric as well. Um, but hey-ho. And then... Oh, yeah, and then I bought some nails, and the guys accidentally sh shipped me some chlorine tablets for swimming pools, and I'm like, well, great. I'll put them in my massive pool. So basically, I haven't had much luck with the post. Oh, I'm watching uh, Lena, Lena Norms, talk about loving lockdown. Well, her and her boyfriend, they're talking about like how they coped with it and stuff like that. Um, but I thought it was interesting because I'm here like, well, even in the introduction, she was, she said something like, um, you know, whether you live with your partner, uh, random people on Gumtree, your friends, your family. And the one thing she didn't mention is whether, if you live alone. And uh, I think the government kind of did that as well. They totally forgot about people who live alone. And me and my mum both live alone. So if there is another lockdown, we're actually, me and Biggie are going to go and stay at hers. But um, yeah, they, the government kind of just totally forgot about us um, until they eventually made rules where two people living alone or whatever can form a bubble, you know? I think that was about 12 weeks in, so for like 12 weeks I didn't see anybody I knew, except for one friend who I bumped into in the shop. Um, obviously didn't literally bump into them though, we stayed two metres apart. But yeah, interesting little video I thought anyway. It's currently Saturday, is it? Yeah it is. And I'm reading The Death of Expertise by Tom Nichols still. I uh, went out yesterday so my friend Jordana came over and I made her Beyond Burgers, because she's been, um, she's not vegan but she's basically gone vegetarian. Um, sort of during the lockdown, I think. Um, she's really happy with it because she's lost a bunch of weight, and I'm obviously happy from, um, you know, animal rights reasons and whatnot. But yeah, she hadn't had a Beyond Burger, so I felt it was incumbent upon me to cook one for her. But yeah, so she came over at like half five ish, maybe six, I don't know. Um, and we had Beyond Burgers, and then we went into town. So we went to the first pub, and then the second pub, and then back to the first pub. Um, but it was quite good because we were outside all the time. The only time you really needed to go in was when you, you know, were ordering a drink or whatever. And they were also doing table service, which was cool. Um, so yeah, we just stayed outside. I made some new friends, met some people I hadn't met before, met some people I had met before. Probably about 10 of us, maybe 12, something like that. And then people sort of dropped out throughout the night. But it was good, but now I'm very hungover, so I ordered a Papa John's vegan pizza to stop me from dying. So that's where we're at. I'm probably going to try and finish The Death of Expertise today and then I'm probably going to read The Other Passenger by Louise Candlish, um, which came as part of a, like a book subscription box I did an unboxing of. Somebody is setting off fireworks outside and it scared poor Biggie. But he's okay now, he's just eating some food. Woo! It's Monday, okay. Oh, Ruth told me at the art centre, she told me she liked my haircut today, and I'm like, I did it myself. Thanks, Ruth. <laughs> um, oh, my uncle's just swapped some tiles on Word Feud, the Scrabble game we're playing. Okay, so, oh, it's been bloody mental. I don't know when I last updated you. So, let's see, Thursday, all going fine. Friday, I went out and got very drunk with um, my friend Jordana. I think I mentioned this, so she came over here, made some Beyond Burgers, and then we went out into town. Then I was very hungover on Saturday, so then Sunday I just sort of took it easy. Uh, I actually worked for most of Sunday. Well, I slept for a lot of it, and then worked for a lot of it, and then I went to sleep at like 6 a.m. today. Got up at like 3 p.m. and went to a meeting at 4 p.m. at the art centre. But that's all good, we've got this really exciting new event coming, uh, which I'll be vlogging as well. So that's really exciting. Um, I think I'm like literally going to be vlogging it for the art centre, but I can probably do it for my, as part of my weekly vlog as well. Um, uh, what else is new? Da -da 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 -da. So yeah, went to that meeting, came back. I'm now, I've got to go back to the art centre in half an hour to lock up after this band called Halvar. Um, let's listen to them. They're about, I think they're like 14, 15 or so. Uh, this is just skipping into, because I'm recording my next uh, radio show. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot my, my speakers are on potato mode. Show me what to say. Okay, so moving that has just cocked up my monitors now. So now I can't pause it. Oh, is it gone? 
I don't even... I don't even know what's happening. Well, anyway, it's paused. Uh, I think I've just glitched out my computer somehow, and I'm not really sure how. I've got to figure this out, really. What have I done? Have I pulled one of these cables out? So, yeah, I've just finished editing that show, which is cutting it a little bit fine because um, it airs tomorrow. So this week's guest is going to be Emma Rosen from BookTube, Emma Rosen Books. Uh, we're going to talk about milk and breastfeeding on the radio, which should be interesting. I'm pretty sure we're allowed to do that. I don't know. We didn't say nipple, so we're probably okay. I don't know. Uh, I thought it was a really interesting chat with her, actually, and I'm pretty sure she agreed as well. We had some, we covered some cool stuff and, like, talked about, like, um, how parenting is different during a pandemic and stuff, you know? So that's cool. So, um... Yeah, I'm just finishing that off. I've got a proof listen to that tonight. Then I'm going to finish watching the rest of Celebrity Master Chef UK. One of my favourites, Henri. He was a tennis player. He just went out the last episode. But we still have Kate, who is a vicar. And uh, I don't normally like vicars. And also, she's from Gogglebox, which I've never watched. But um, she is my favourite contestant now that Henri's gone. So, Although Henri went in the same episode as my least favourite contestant as well. Anyway... Mm-mm-mm-mm... I finished reading The Death of Expertise by Tom Nichols. It was pretty good. I've actually, I know that by the time you're watching this, the review is out because I just posted it. So, um, yeah, I gave it like a four out of five. And I'm now reading Louise Candlish, The Other Passenger, which I was going to do a review of, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to now. Um, it's, it's the one that I got sent with the uh, book box that I did, the unboxing that I did. And um, it's not that there's anything bad about it. It's just very gone girl, girl on the train. Like, I mean, it does the jumping backwards and forwards through time bits that you slowly sort of start to see more about the past and how that's changed the present. And um, I don't know, it's just quite generic thrillery, to be honest. But it's not bad, that said. Um, the characters are kind of unlikable. Actually, I will say, I do kind of like this main character in a way. Um, even though he's having an affair with somebody, which, like, for me, normally, that instantly, I'm just like, oh, fuck these guys, then I, I don't care what happens to them. But, um, I don't know. I kind of feel from a bit, I guess. It's okay. It's, like, competently done, I would say. And if you like Girl on the Train, Gone Girl, that kind of stuff, you would probably like The Other Passenger. Um, if you like Agatha Christie and stuff, probably, probably not so much. But, uh, I predict it will do well, though. I mean, she's already a best-selling author, and, um... Like, this is the thing, it's not brilliant, but it hits all of the marketing hotspots. It's competent, but it hits all of those hotspots, you know? Which arguably means it'll probably sell better than a very well done book that doesn't hit those hotspots. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I've been reading that over a couple of days, because I've not been reading too much, I've been super busy. Um, but yeah, I'll probably finish it off over the next couple of days. And I've been reading some Bill Bryson book, I've already forgotten what it is now, but it's a really like chunkery non-fiction book about the origins of the English language, which is funny because I read it while practicing my French as well. And I think that is it for this week's vlog, so as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.